are all video games with guitars in them required to now have like the Last of Us mini game? Here's the here's the catch though. You can you yeah. can strum down or up. Choice is up to you. Ooh, okay, okay. Last um, of Us Part Two did not have that. I'll tell you that much, right? I remember. No, you can finger pick with the touchpad, right? A little bit. Um, this is one of those things. Anytime a video game is like, oh, it's got a guitar in it, I'm like, this is this is not right. Yo, what is up gamers and FPS, immersive sim, atmospheric horror fans? And welcome to Game Gems, the show where we go hands-on with the latest cool, sometimes not so small hidden gem video games and give you our initial impressions. Today we're checking out Stalker 2, Heart of Chernobyl, the new FPS survival horror game from GSC Game World. I am Christian Macias and joining me, video lead Peter Hunt Spitek. Peter, you ready to go into the zone? Were you were you strumming a little guitar? I was. I like, was. Okay. Could you hear that? I, I could. I could. Um, are all video games with guitars in them required to now have like the Last of Us mini game? Here's the here's the catch though. You can you yeah. can strum down or up. Choice is up to you. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Last um, of Us Part Two did not have that. I'll tell you that much. Right. I remember. No, you can finger pick with the touchpad, right? A little bit. Um. It's one of those things, anytime a video game is like, oh, it's got a guitar in it, I'm like, this is, this is not right. But what is right is, uh, what's going on in here? What's going on in Chernobyl? Yeah, man, we're in the zone. A little bit of an, uh, a little appetizer here to get you a feel for what we can expect out of Stalker 2. Uh, I was waiting out the rain uh, with my little guitar, less visibility in the rain. Uh, gonna go loot this little area, see what's in here. Before I can do that. So, uh, yeah, please. I, I never, I never played the the original or any of the Stalker series. Like, what is the, what is? I mean, you mentioned it's an immersive sim and, and like kind of like horror y but like, can you walk me through like what this game is all about? Oops. Yeah, man. So. Obviously inspired by real life events uh, in in Chernobyl uh, with 1986. Okay. Nuclear reactor, um, and it's also partially inspired by, uh, of course, Tarkovsky's Stalker uh, mm -hmm. of going into the exclusion zone, uh, and then the radiation from the disaster has has brought on these mutants and anomalies and radiation and all these things that are that are not right. And so in Stalker, you are a Stalker, titular Stalker, and you are going into the zone. Obviously, this game has a different story uh, than the other games. This is my first Stalker game as well, by the way. Okay. Uh, that is the pitch. Gotcha, gotcha. You're going into the exclusion zone as a Stalker. Got it. Uh, this time, we play as a character named Skiff. Okay. And so, like, you're you're fighting these, like, monsters and, and, like, radiation things and, you know, like, beasts and whatever? Mutants, people, sometimes are our, our, our own friendlies, and we'll get into that. I have a little anecdote for you. Uh, lots mm -hmm. of notes here on emergent, um, on emergent gameplay. The pitch for, for what I edited here for you today is that I am trying to go to do a mission north of the opening area. No, no major story spoilers here. Uh, of the lesser zone, kind of the first area that you get into in the game. But before I can do that, I need to go on some supply runs to get myself prepped up to make the journey. Okay. So I go south to get some supply runs, head back to base to get ready to gear up to actually go on my mission. And that kind of takes a while of the gameplay. So we found here a, a, a big anomaly. And usually with these like bigger anomalies, you can find an artifact. And what these artifacts do is they give you some kind of pro, sometimes a negative, and you can wear this on your person to kind of give you a little bit of a buff. This one gives me a, a damage buff if I wear this around my person. Okay. So, so it like, looks like a lot of gear that you're sort of like shifting through? Yeah, man. If you've played games like, of course, Tarkov is the big one. Uh, you're, you're looting stuff for three or four bullets maybe got it okay ho hoping that the it's the right caliber to, to fit in your weapon uh and you can't carry so much stuff because then you'll get weighted down you can see in the bottom left hand you'll have, have the weight indicator there and that oh, the yeah. more weight i carry the less dynamic movement they call it um i'll be able to achieve in a game per se 
Sure. And, and so I imagine that there's like that, you know, risk reward of like, well, bring less stuff to be able to like outrun enemies or, or you know, vault over whatever. But like having less stuff yeah. means you just have less options or whatever. And brother, this game is hard and I've been there. I've been on runs yeah. where I go in with a couple of clips uh, and it ends up not being enough. And now I am running out of there to get out of dodge and, and try to, to heal up um, just to survive and get back and, and, and not die. Um, gotcha. this, this game is very difficult, man. And, and that is that they pride themselves, GSC Game World, over the game's difficulty. Mm -hmm. um, and I will say there, there's a day, they're calling it the day zero patch that went live. Um, I played about 15 hours, maybe around hour 10 is where they pushed it for me. Okay. Uh, and it, it, it kind of did change up the enemy UI, both with humans and mutants. And it's still extremely difficult uh, but now I'm getting this like really good gameplay loop of what they're calling like this this hypothesizing AI where they kind of think they know where you are. They'll chase after you in certain areas. You can flank them. Uh, it's made some really, really good emergent gameplay um, and has made the difficulty a bit more manageable. Oh, interesting. Okay. So I, I saw you like shoot the lock off of that that uh, door. Is that and you know obviously you're like hitting these things with knives and stuff like that to, to open these crates. Um, is this the sort of thing where like you know you could have found a key for that lock maybe inside that house or are, are is is do you know what I'm getting at like like are you offered like multiple solutions to get inside buildings and, and to like make your way through the areas and stuff like that? Not every building, but some buildings yes. Some buildings you can kind of maybe parkour and get around uh, and fall in through a roof to get inside and then open the okay. door that way. Some of them are like you find an alternate route where maybe the windows are, are, are boarded up and you can take those out and get in. It just kind of depends on which place you're heading into. This is not a procedural world. Uh, they were in the kind of review guide, they were mentioning that like this place is handcrafted. Everything uh, there is placed with purpose. So it just depends. Gotcha, okay. The attic. The attic. So it seems it seems a lot of like like horror elements. Is that is that about right? Yeah, dude. This is this is a game you play with maybe some headphones on and sure. the lights off. Like it is extremely extremely atmospheric. Sometimes even more like ASMR-y, to be honest. Mm. Uh, with like the, the the sound design is really really good. Specifically with rain, uh, the pitter patter is just hitting different environments. Sound really really good. And I've gotten a few tingles. Here I am, back at base, did a little supply run. We're back, we're gonna sell some gear, put some gear away, uh, get some upgrades before we start traversing to this side objective we have in the north of the lesser zone. So is it, is it like like questy? Do you know what I mean? Like in, in this kind of looks, you know, with the, the hub area, whatever, very like Far Cry-esque. Is that kind of how it feels a little bit in terms of its structure? Absolutely, I was actually surprised how side questy it can be. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't sure how to feel about it initially, because the pit, it's always hard, right? Like, how do you make me care? Yeah. And the thing that I found really interesting is that the, the pitch of the game is that they don't want good or bad objectives with figuring out, like, a, or, or completing some kind of mission, whether it be main or side. Um, sure. And what they've done is make things kind of more gray area. Like, for example, I found uh, a, a, another stalker who was with uh, a military guy that the stalkers don't really care about. Um, turns out the military guy saved the stalker's life, right? Uh, so I don't, you know, I was tasked to kill the guy because they, they think that he hurt him, right? I don't know if I'm making mm -hmm. sense here. And so I come back, I come, I come back to tell this guy the information. I didn't kill him. Uh, this guy did not kill the stalker. And mm -hmm. like, hey, listen, I believe you, but the rest of the guys back around base are not gonna like what you hear. And so now they, they might respond to me a little bit differently. So what is it, what does that like actually look like in terms of consequences? Is it like, they're not gonna sell you items or, or is it just like dialogue stuff or does that like change what sort of quests are available? You know what it's, I mean? So far it's mostly short dialogue. Sometimes it's been like, if they see me with a gun, they'll shoot at, they'll shoot at me. Um, other times it's nothing. So it sort of just d depends. Good luck gotcha. And so I so saw you upgrading your, your weapons there? Yes, I was. I upgraded to add a little rail site because I bought a holographic site and now I can upgrade or attach my site to my, my Viper 5. 
here's the map okay okay are you finding a lot of weapons in this or is it more um yeah like tons. You get one yeah okay gotcha I mean, every enemy will have a weapon. You can pick it up. The The catch okay, here, though, cool. is that weapons degrade over time. And the more they degrade, uh, the more likely they are to um, to jam on you. Gotcha. So I keep mine with my upgrades and with my attachments. Um, and I, I try not to pick up enemy weapons unless it's like a new one. Mm-hmm. Shut your trap, I've got some. If I may, one quick thing to note here. This this gameplay you're seeing right now was before the patch, and so you see a little audio bug here where I'm shooting my gun and nothing you didn't hear anything. Sure. Since then, in the day zero patch, that has been fixed. And that was one of like the biggest bugs that I've encountered. No longer the case in five to six hours of game time since that patch has been pushed. Do you know how um performance was because this is on PC, right? Yeah, so I have NVIDIA overlay on usually when I play. You okay. obviously can't see it here when I'm when I'm doing capture, but like I can see it. And mm -hmm. I have like I have like a mid-range PC. Uh, the game defaulted to medium settings. I could go to high, but I prefer performance. So yeah. I was getting 60 to 90 frames in most encounters. I had a few minor dips with like some bigger anomalies and when like there was like more enemies on screen. But it wasn't anything too major. I was just, just some noticeable little fr frame dips here and there. And that was pre-patch. Since patch, the day zero patch, I haven't seen much of that. Gotcha, gotcha. Have you heard any uh, conversation uh, amongst other people who've had it early about um, how it performs on, on console? Because it's, it's just Series X and S, right? Or is it on yep. PS5? It's, it, it's just Windows and, and Xbox Series X and S. Uh, and I've only, no, I haven't talked to anyone who's playing on console. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, but I mean, if you're saying that, you know, their day one patch or rather day zero patch, uh, uh, helped with, with that performance, then I think it would make sense that, um, you would probably run all right on console then. So what's going on here with your eyes? Are you, is this a status yeah. effect or, or? So, no. So we're in a poppy field. This is one of our missions. We're here to, uh, to look for, uh, like some kind of cellar somewhere in this poppy field, but the poppy field itself has become an anomaly leading to either hallucinations or, yeah, like that little bit of a drowsy effect. And so we were informed that if you want to explore this area, it's best to bring some energy drinks with us and sip on those uh, because you may pass out. That could lead to a death. So we're out okay. here trying to find this. I, I'm not going to show all of it because I, I want to avoid some spoilers, right? I think it's interesting the way this one kind of shapes out, but you, it is, it is cool, to, cool to see what anomalies look like. But it reminded me of something, Peter, if I may regale you with a little bit Please? of an anecdote a couple of years ago man i watched i watched a documentary called the babushkas of chernobyl <laughs> it's okay. it's the, it's these you know these these women who are living inside the exclusion zone and refuse to leave because that's that's where they lived right yeah and so these documentarians follow them around and what they find is that they're not only surviving, but thriving in the exclusion zone. Specifically, through the use of, of mushrooms. They, they use mushrooms as kind of their main food supply, right? And that what they found is that these mushroom, this mushroom network in the, in the exclusion zone was rhizomatic. They were, the mushrooms were talking to each other through their, their own network and figuring out the best places for them to grow so that they don't grow with like radiation in them they were healthy huh. mushrooms and the okay. way that i've the way that i've have found the anomalies in stalker is very much reminiscent of like rhizomatic mushrooms where the zone itself feels like the major entity the main mm -hmm. character of the game even small things like the poppy field or even things like the fire coming out of specific holes in the ground or whatever to this this emission that you're seeing, where you're, well, that you're about to see, where in the flash of an instant, you have to go find shelter ASAP and hide out, because if you're out there, you'll die. Who? So, so, I, so like, I bet lightning strikes and, and all that, so you gotta be careful of that? Oh no, it gets worse. It gets way oh, worse. It gets worse? That. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, see, th see, this is interesting, and I, I appreciate, like, the idea too that you have to be careful of like status effects and stuff are you are you having to eat and sleep and stuff like that too it's like really survival based sleeping is huge man if you're out uh awake for too long you start getting drowsy which affects your combat affects your uh your energy levels your healing 
Uh, yeah, and you do have to go back to base and, and find a bed to sleep in. And of course, hunger and thirst play a part. I'm always eating. I'm always uh, sipping on some water. Little snacks, yeah. Um, see, that's kind of cool. I, I appreciate like that more like simulation stuff in, in a, like a survival game like this, um, especially if it's going to have that main focus on mm-hmm. like where you are and making sure that you're being not like conscious of those like anomalies and that sort of thing. Yeah, dude. Um, some of the some of the food items as well uh, will heal you with like radiation. So if you've got too much radiation on oh, you, sure. you can s- sip on some alcohol. Uh, and that'll alleviate hunger a little bit, but it'll alleviate uh, uh, radiation poisoning. But it also might, gotcha. might make you a little buzzed, and now it affects your eyesight. Okay. What are you doing here? What are you? Fl- what are these like little things that you're like flipping out? I'm throwing bolts on the ground so I know where to walk. This just isn't your day. There's some anomalies on the ground. Oh, so that you know, you gotcha, gotcha. It's in catch on fire or whatever. Yep. Exactly. That so we're trying sense. to sneak into this lab. Uh, we obviously cannot go in the front door. They won't let us. We try to do that. We'll get shot at. We'll die. It, it, could you say, actually, I'm coming through, pull out a gun and, and shoot your way through? Or is it like they're not letting you through no matter what? No, you could. You could do that. I'm not. Yeah. I chose not to hey. do that. It's multiple options, right? Okay. Yeah. With resources so scarce, why would I? Yeah. Um, you feel me? In, in, yeah, in terms of, like, getting into this place, is it the sort of thing where, like, you've got multiple routes in that are, like, specifically designed for you to get through? Or is it the sort of thing where you're like, I have to actually, like, figure out my path through here on my own, like, by breaking a window, jumping through, that sort of thing? No, it, it feels curated? like there's... It It feels like it's a curated design. Got it. There's a couple of places that you can sneak in. But as for, once you're in here... No, it's kind of open-ended. Stealth is, is pretty much on you. Got it. Uh, how good is the stealth? I know you mentioned that the the enemies got this this patch update that that changes it around a little bit, but like, um, are they intelligent or how does that how's that go? Significantly better post patch. Pre patch, I would have instances where they would, when I broke stealth, they would know where I am exactly, no matter what I did. Yeah. Or I would hide in a room for for a couple of seconds and they go back to telling jokes to each other. Uh, sure. po- post patch, I'm seeing their pitch of like hypothesizing AI, where they think oh, they cool. know where I am. They'll check it out in groups, and if I hide well enough, they'll check out a different area. It has changed the way I play since then. See, for me, me that that makes or breaks a game like this, right? About like that you can have the best sort of like you know uh, immersive sim environments in the world, but like if the AI doesn't work, then it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yep. 100% agree. I was, uh, I was thinking about Redfall today, and I was, like, j- just remembering, like, how disappointing that, uh, that, like, those immersive sim elements were just because, like, well, the enemies don't respond well to this, so it just doesn't work sure. at all, but it's good to hear that this, this, uh, avoids that. So that's them hypothesizing. They heard the gunshots. Yeah. They're going to come on <laughs> over, and they did indeed come in groups. So how fast are you going down? Like, like, is this the sort of thing where, like, if you are not behind cover, you're completely done, or, or, um... Just give you some leeway. You know what I mean? I, I chose to edit out some of the stuff that would have made this video a bit longer, but some of the uh, combat scenarios that I found myself in, a couple of shots and I'm down to like, I need to be healing right now or I'll die. Uh, even it. worse is are the grenades. Um, there's no indicators, obviously, like where gunfire is coming from, where bullets are coming from, where grenades are being thrown at. It is all audio mm-hmm. design, and if you see them, um, and I was unlucky enough to, to get a grenade thrown near me and I ended up walking yeah. nearby and it was I went from full health to just done Reload sure. my save is, So uh, that was the other question is is like is it okay now time to reload the save because like there's just no way to get past this uh, In the current situation or, or do you have the leeway of like okay? I've got a lot of health items like I'm gonna be able to patch myself up pretty easily It's the latter uh, okay, gotcha. mo- most most scenarios end up like that now where I can patch myself up pretty easily and re- recenter and, and make it out like even this like coming across an anomaly I'm near death and near mutant but I managed to heal myself up real quick and I and I survive this right I don't have to reload a save but if, I, if yeah. that is the case there are friendly enough auto saves where I can I'm right outside a, a scenario somewhat um, got it and can tackle it again so we're seeing this this shimmer thing. Is this like a type of enemy or, or is it like an invisible? Oh, yeah, it's this like cool guy that we saw at the beginning. Yep. 
That ex the exact same kind of mutant. Uh, if they screech near you, it, it, it has that status effect where the screen kind of goes wobbly. Mm -hmm. You can't necessarily move very well. Are there a lot of different uh, enemy types in this? As far as mutants, absolutely. Uh, and I hate... I would rather face a human than a mutant at, like, any day of the week. Uh, the mutants are actually terrifying, and it's the way they kind of... Got it. They group in numbers. Uh, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll kind of pack themselves, and so suddenly you're fighting a, a pack of, of dogs or these, like, bulbous kind of things that are just tanky, and you'll go from having, you know, five or six clips on your inventory to having, like, one left after an encounter with some mutants. 100% sure. would rather have an, uh, an humans. Gotcha. What's the what's the ratio in terms of like what you're fighting? Oh yeah, look at these like rat guys. Is it, is it mostly mutants or is it like a lot of humans or good mix? I I mostly encounter like bandits and humans and stuff. Um, okay. I'd say so far maybe like 75, 25 humans to mutants. Okay. Well, that's, that's not too bad though because I mean it means that when you do run into those mutants, it's it's kind of a moment, you know. Yep. Absolutely. When you're in the end, man, uh, one yeah. quick note, though, that I wanted to mention is that, Bring that shit over here. the game is very story heavy when you okay. do main story missions. Um, and based on your decisions with what you do surrounding these these characters will lead you to one of four endings. Um, and they pride themselves in like there are no good or bad endings. You just have different endings. It's based just on different. Your choices. Yeah. Uh, and so far, anytime there's like some kind of new story beat, it's pretty, pretty engaging. Okay. Is, um, so this is out, uh, when? By the time this, this video goes up? By the time this video goes up, this game will be live. Amazing. And it's on, uh, you said Windows and Xbox. It's on Game Pass too, right? <laughs> yep, absolutely. Windows, Xbox Series X and S. And yeah, if you have Game Pass, it is on Game Pass. I think I might have to uh, to check that out then, just because uh, you know I've got Game Pass, might as well dip into this is something that I'm into. Peter, that was Stalker Two, and that is this week's game jams hashtag TGGG. Let us know what you think of Stalker down below. For all things FPS Rebel Horror, make sure you stick with the gamer. <laughs>